a lot of the viewers were very interested on one of our finds that we had uh, last year. He wants to make a junkyard magnet, right? Yeah, just for um, like a mini excavator. Look at yeah. how janky this is, though. <laughs> is that wizard? This is now the time. So I'm wondering whether we're going to try it and just uh, see if it goes kaboom. Well, this morning, Cole came up to me and mentioned that a lot of the viewers were very interested on one of our finds that we had uh, last year, which was this gigantic green AC welder. And uh, I already had my eye on it for a project, but uh, since everybody was so interested in it, we decided to see if we could get it running and working today. So we got to move some stuff around, get to it because it is mighty heavy. Uh, uh, Move that out? No, uh, I can just squeeze my way in. Alright, well if I moved it, you wouldn't have to squeeze. Squeeze! Have you told them everything? Well, I've told them a little bit. I don't know if I told everything. Well, about I it. saw that this welder was a popular comment on the ninth episode that we did. So I was like, oh, excited to come to Alan and say, hey man, what are the chances we get that running? And then Iran told me, he's like, dude, the only reason that welder is even back there is because Alan wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> so perfect timing we get to fix the welder and accomplish what i thought you know was the goal yeah. but you said something else well the ori the original uh, reason that i was interested in this is not for welding actually okay tell me about it i was going to use it to run an electromagnet electromagnet is that kind of the same thing as a well whatever drill i'm sure people always have seen uh at the uh metal scrap yards oh dude the what's big, that uh... the giant equipment with the uh, magnets that they put on the ends of the excavators yeah brave little toaster what the movie no i don't know anything about that yeah, I'm okay. talking about scrapyards and metal recycling. And then, okay. The brave Little Toaster, it comes and gets them. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking Do about. you know what I'm talking about? Brave Little Toaster? The magnet? I'm clueless. He wants to make a junkyard uh, magnet, right? Yeah, just for um, like a mini excavator. So you can like pick things up and then flip a switch and it drops it? Right. So this, well, how does that do that? Well, you still need a generator so you can generate your main power or you could plug it in to uh, an external power supply. And then this uh, simply generates a, an AC voltage, but it's a very low voltage. And then all you have to do is run into it, make your own coil out of rings of uh, iron. Yeah. So basically you just make that big round a cylinder looking thing with a bunch of windings in it and then you're able to uh, use it to pick up uh, iron and any ferrous metals anything that's uh, attracted to the magnets all right let's and get the welder running first i guess one of the big questions let me just look at this real quick well we're looking good what'd you look at <laughs> <laughs> let's just look at the box nice over <laughs> There's two wires coming out of that. Yeah. Oh, I thank see. goodness. I see. Okay. Well, the reason is that there's like three or four, then we're probably looking at three phase. And I don't know if we have any good power outlets for three phase. Showing with those two means it's probably only a single phase, and hopefully it's single phase 220, 240.
timing, helicopter. Good timing. We have a power outlet right over there we can hopefully hook up to. But I've got to figure out exactly what the uh, voltages are to make sure, but it looks like, uh, just initial glance, it does look like it's a 220. Uh, so what we have here is some very old ground well, electrical leads. Now that is some old leads. And an electrode. Single phase, 60 cycles, 230, 460 volts, which is good. We have single phase and we have a capability of 220 or 440. Hopefully it's set up for like 220. And it is a 500 amp welder. Yeah, that's a big one. Most of them are uh, older school welders, 300 amps, 400 amps. This is a 500 amp. Well, I think it's time to grab some tools. We'll open some things up to make sure we don't have any uh, rat's nests in here. That'll cause a fire. There's some interesting things. I'm not sure what this is for. It's probably some sort of a lever for something. I'll grab some tools. That doubly confirms all my single phase, but we're gonna have to open this one up here to see what our voltage is going to be. There's a sweet heart yearning for me day by day. Well, that's not good. We're missing the paper here that describes the wiring for the two different voltages. And it's missing. I don't see any reference. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty much gonna assume it's 220. If this was set for 220 and we plugged it into 440, that would be really bad because it'd be pulling twice the current that it uh, would be allowed and could burn stuff out. But if it's set for 440 and we only put 220 in it, it's just going to uh, not load down at all. Eee. Oh, the fan seems to spin still in there. That's amazing. Look at that fan. This thing's like from the turn of the century and that fan is still, still working. Probably take all the side panelings off and uh, make sure everything is uh, all there. There we go. Oh, that's an interesting uh, setup. This has definitely got some. Uh, Dirt and grime in it. We're gonna need a vacuum. Take the other side off. Oh, well, that's very interesting. That's really cool. That's really cool. These guys made it very easy to access it. Gonna probably have to blow this out with air, but I like to get most of it out with a vacuum. I don't like blowing all the dirt back into the windings. Looking at the uh, where all the wires go to make sure everything is like connected. Well, I am going to remove this electrical box because we're not going to need it. Our power outlets are already have uh, circuit breakers on them, so this is one problematic area that we'll just remove.
Now this welder will definitely be able to pull more than our wall is capable of. So I set it to the lowest setting so we won't bl uh, blow a breaker. Well, I think it's time now to cannibalize one of our cables so we can plug this in. I think this one will do. Before I put some in, I think I'm gonna have to blow out some and see if I can see any markings. Don't need to really stick it through here, but we'll stick it through anyway, just for funsies. These two wires right here I'm hooking in are the main power. My ground wire is a little short. But I will just make a jumper for it. I don't want to have to put our electrical box back together. I'm just going to leave everything the way it is. And then I will just cut me a little short piece of wire. I'm just hooking this thing in for testing purposes. I'll put a little bit of tape on that so it doesn't flop off. Everybody ready to see whether or not this thing's gonna go boom, fizz, burn, smoke, fire, whatever. This is now the time. This voltmeter doesn't work very good at uh, low resistances. So I'm wondering whether we're gonna try it and just uh, see if it goes kaboom or whether it runs. This has no on and off switch on it directly. So this is my on and off switch. It's 500 amps, 40 volts. Well, I've got to go in on the computer, do a little math. Let's go do some math. Well, it says that uh, it uh, needs a basically a 100 amp breaker. These are just rough uh, estimates, 90 amps. So. Math is a really cool thing. It says that uh, it should be a non inductive, a simply resistive load would be about uh, two and a half ohms. That's at full power. And I'm like showing the same thing, but my my ohm meter is not very good. So I think we're gonna just gonna try this. Boom! Alrighty. Okay, here goes nothing. Whoa, it's working. This means I need a better ohm meter. Everything's working pretty good. I figured we'd have more problems, but it's uh, straightforward working great so far. But we don't, we haven't like uh, done any welding yet. So, but now we have to sort out this mess here. So I think somebody put a joint in the ground. I will cut the ground. We'll cut our joint and use a smaller wire for an electrode. Let's make ourselves an electrode. Wow. Oh, mm. just corroded out. Now let's can go and do it a little bit easier than this. Unfortunately, I have not charged my batteries. Hopefully, it's got enough that it will. Yeah, that's enough to do this. Another pressure wrench. Right? 
Well, I don't have a good uh, a good ground connection. This is loose, and I don't want to just start welding and then uh, uh, arc off uh, the uh, uh, any of these connector pieces. So I'm trying to loosen this wing nut so I can tighten it. That's what I did on this one. I uh, got it off because this is where I'm going to hook the uh, electrode. I'm going to put some uh, anises on it so I can got a good connection. But I don't. This thing is like loose, but I can't tighten it because it's rusted. So I have a little bit of a problem right here. I like to heat it a little bit, but I don't want to damage that. Let me get the little torch to see if I can heat it just enough that it'll break free. Just so everyone's aware, this is Alan's idea of a little torch. The big guns for a little job. The uh, our regular propane hand torches, they have such a big flame, the flame's gonna spread over and hit other components, which I don't want it to. So I am going to grab the smallest welding tip we have so I can make a very, very small flame and heat that wing nut right where it hits the threads really quickly, really hot and really fast and then pull it off. So I do not do any other damage because I think the probability of finding replacement parts for this is next to nil. So you have a very little, very hot, very localized heat hit on one spot. It's a straight Which it might need to be a little hot. It's hot enough. Guess not. Maybe that would have been enough to do it. done with it. I'm just going to take it off. My threads aren't that bad. Well, I'm going to clean it up here. Do you know what Dua Lipa is? No. It's like two lips? I got you all night. You're my starlight. I need you. You got it, Alex. Drugs kill there, Caleb. <laughs> ah, the one I needed was in here. There we go. Back like I say. Every time. Put some anesthesia on it. Okay, now for this, you're just going to No, this is just temporary because these welded, these uh, wires are so corroded. Uh, and not only that, the insulation's all wore out. So I am only putting them on here to test out the welding. So it's good enough. So I need, I need a piece of metal to weld on now, don't we? Uh, there's a nice big chunk of uh, metal there we can weld to. There's our ground. Now we need a piece of welding rod. Because we took a lot of the welding rod out on one of the recoveries. So I 
I'm gonna have to look outside. 20 minutes later. Grab two. Got him. Yep. No, I do not have a stinger. I'm going to make one out of this. Just to keep it so I don't like shock myself too badly if there's a bad ground, I will put some gloves Where is Alan? What do you do? ACD. Fix this ACDC uh, welder. Remember when... Minus the DC. Hey. Right, Al? We didn't know what this was. It was just in the back lot and really yeah, heavy. You thought it was a washing machine? I I didn't say that. I spotted that thing in the barn when it was out in the uh, when we were uh, recovering all that uh, scrap. Oh really? Oh yeah. So you just told us I can get that thing working, and now we're two hours later, and we're gonna get this thing working. That's cool. I don't know where I'm stepping. I might. Yeah. Okay. Fans on. Fans on. This is an old stick welder. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, an old AC stick welder. It's on the 100 to 300 amp range at 50%. So that should be like um, 200 amps. I need to grab a glove real quick. This is really cool. Look at, <laughs> Look at how janky this is, though. This is awesome. Okay, one. That's percentage. Oh, 50%? See, in each range, you have a percentage. If you have okay. this is 100 to 300 range, this is like a 195 to 475, and that's 375 to max. So are you saying you're around 200 right here because this is yeah. at 50? Should be. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I can't not look. It's a little too hot for this uh, lead. All right, you so turn it turn down it to down? like 20. Got it. Turn down to 20. It's still a little hot for the rod. Turn down to 10. Do you want me to go to the Hobart? Or? No, that's oh. good. All right. Hobart, what does that do? I don't know. Put it the whole bar. We don't know what. I, I don't know. Boom. It's a bit rough for an AC. This is also not AC rod, but yeah, I turn it to 10. Now, this machine is designed for much heavier rods. Where do we put this in the shop? Uh, see, we're gonna now, Iram is gonna weld with this from now on. Okay. We don't need only that newfangled stuff. That's really my point awesome. is, I, my eye was on it because to use it as a power supply to make an electromagnet. You know, like you see, like in the scrap yards when they. On I the forgot machines. that's what you were wanting to do. Um, when are you doing that? In like 30 minutes? Cool. Oh. <laughs> to build the electromagnet <laughs> would take a little bit of work. Okay. But now you have a power source. All right, Alan, just keep going with the electromagnet. <laughs> well, that's like. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta figure out to get materials for something like that. How many? What do you need? You're talking to the right guy. We need some pretty. We need like uh, probably not make one that's too big, but something like maybe foot and a half, two feet in diameter. But it needs to be almost like solid metal. But we can use layered half inch plate. But remember, cutting half inch plate, you know, we can go. We we could shoot through like twelve hundred dollars pretty quick. We've made twelve hundred dollar mistakes on less fifteen hundred, okay. and then it takes a little bit of it'll be a little bit of design before I can figure out exactly how I would do that. All right. So if you want to see Alan take this AC welder and turn it into an electromagnet that could possibly pick up anything yeah. out of Alan's compound or here or, or here, here anywhere, go buy this T-shirt to support wow. Alan's electromagnet. <laughs> Alan is, you know. He's flattered right now, if you can't tell. <laughs> Speechless, they might say. No one's ever made Alan his own shirt, okay? So he's speechless. I'm actually stunned. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Speechless, they might say. <laughs> okay. I can speak again. 
<laughs> no, that's the perks of being a wizard. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so if you didn't understand that, if you want to support him with creating this electromagnet out of this awesome piece of equipment, go to sparksmotorsfiscal.com and purchase this shirt. It'll go to fund for electromagnet. And we won't even damage the uh, welder itself. No, the that welder will be robust. the power supply. And then we'll have a nice big electric ma electromagnet. We can hook up to a forklift or the excavator and we can move this stuff up. Through the vineyards we will wander by and by. by, and by.